Roasting coffee takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. But what if there was a shortcut? What if there was a roasting machine that an absolute beginner could pick up and get competition level roast at home with the push of a button? Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, let me introduce you to my new favorite roaster, the Nucleus Link. Oh, you want me to tell you more about it. Okay, right. Cue the intro. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, your captain speaking. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Captain's Coffee. I'm David, and today we're talking about my new favorite roaster, the Nucleus Link. Now, this thing is incredible, and you don't just have to take my word for it. It was originally designed as a sample roaster for professional roasters when they're traveling to origin. And it's evolved into a precise and a flexible system that's used in roasting and brewing competitions all over the world. If you're an experienced roaster, you can design your own roast profile and the link will replicate it all on its own. But it's designed simply enough that beginners can produce competition ready roasts on the first try. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but stick with me here and you'll see what I mean. I've already done over a hundred roasts with this machine and I can safely say this is my end game roaster. And this video is going to be like a review video, a beginner's guide and a buyer's guide all wrapped up in one. I mean, why make three videos when one will do the trick? So I want to tell you what I love about it, what I don't love about it and why it's now my favorite roaster. And hopefully that'll help you decide if it's the right roaster for you. Now, speaking of which, just before we jump into it, full disclosure, when we purchased this roaster, our original goal was for it to just be a sample roaster for our use here in the shop. But within the first few roasts, we realized its true potential and we decided we had to add it to our lineup. So we've partnered with the good folks at GH Grinding and Brewing Solutions here in North Carolina. By the time this video is out, we will have launched the link on our web store. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm a firm believer that just because something is right for me doesn't mean it's the right thing for everybody. So I hope this video will help you decide if it is the right thing for you. And I'll even compare it to some other roasters throughout the video. And if it is right for you, you can pick it up from us at our shop, thecaptainscoffee.com. It comes with free stuff like a green coffee sampler, free shipping and more. So if you decide it isn't the right roaster for you, well, we've got roasters to suit every budget and videos on all of them. So I'm sure we can find the right fit, but enough chit chat. We got a lot of ground to cover. So let's dig into the link. Let's kick things off with just a little bit of background on the development of the Nucleus Link. If the shape and footprint look familiar to you, that's likely because you've heard of the Cafe Logic Nano 7. Well, the Link was developed as a collaboration between Nucleus and Cafe Logic. While the Link and Nano are similar in a lot of ways, they're also pretty different. Think of the base unit like a desktop computer. Every desktop computer starts with the same general rectangular case, and they all share a lot of the components like a motherboard, a CPU, fans, all that stuff but there's components that can be very different. Maybe one desktop has a more powerful CPU than another one because the use case is different. And then sometimes entire components can be included or left out. For instance, my desktop has a pretty powerful graphics card since I do a lot of video editing and your desktop might not have a dedicated graphics card at all. Well, it's the same idea with the Nucleus Link and the Cafe Logic Nano. Cafe Logic makes the case and many of the major functional components and Nucleus swaps in components that fill the exact specification of the roaster they wanted to make. And there's some pretty important differences that made us choose the Nucleus link, but let's start with the things they have in common. For starters, both roasters function in the same general way. They're fluid bed roasters with a powerful fan and a heating element 
controlled by a PID system with a thermocouple. Okay, that's a mouthful. Let's break it down. Fluid bed roasters use hot air to roast the beans. Uh, the hot air does the heavy lifting of roasting the beans while keeping them moving constantly so that they roast evenly. Now that air is heated by a heating element in the unit which gets hotter as more power is applied to it. On the Fresh Roast SR800, which is also an air roaster, you control the amount of power to the element using a knob. On the Lincoln Nano, it's controlled by a PID controller, and PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, which is engineer speak for a controller that adjusts the power to the element automatically based on the feedback from the system. In this case, that feedback is supplied from the thermocouple or heat probe in the roasting chamber, which tells the system the average temperature of the beans. In summary, you tell the roaster what you want and it roasts for you based on the most important measurement in coffee roasting, bean temperature. Push a few buttons, it spits out perfectly roasted coffee all by itself. But wait a second, I hear you say through the internet, you're leaving out the most crucial element to mastering roasting. Every bean is different. How do I know what to tell it to do for every single bean out there? Well, I'm so glad you asked because this is where the Link and the Nano split. The Link is equipped with over 350 unique roasting profiles, so it can nail the exact roast appropriate for your coffee. It's not just a roasting machine, but a complete system that includes everything you need to guide you to choose the exact profile that's best for what you want out of every coffee you roast, even down to the brew method you plan on using. It's like having a professional roaster and barista on speed dial, which is exactly the idea. Sam Cora, who designed every single profile built into the link, is a competitive roaster and competitive barista. He not only put his experience into designing each profile, but he also used feedback from lots of other coffee professionals, including farmers, roasters, and baristas. Now this system takes some basic information about your coffee and it gives you a profile to try. And all you have to do is load the coffee and press play. But what if you've been roasting for years and you know what you want out of your coffee, you're ready to take control and do what you want with it. Well, the link also allows you to design the exact roast curve you want and gives you control over every variable in the process. And when you're done designing your perfect roast curve, all you have to do is push play and it repeat it every time, time and again, with no further work out of you. So, how does it work? The Link isn't just a roasting machine, it's a three-part system. The Link Roaster itself, the Link app, and the Link Studio software. Now, what I love about this system is its flexibility. These three parts can be used together or independently in several different ways, depending on what your needs are at any given time. So, let's break it down and I'll show you what I mean. Let's start with the beating heart of the Link system, the roasting machine itself, which is all you need to roast at any given time. Now the roaster and all its accessories come inside this military grade case. Again, this machine is meant for air travel, so it's rated to take a beating. Inside you'll see the roaster base, the top chamber with built-in chaff collector, a dosing cup, the density tube, which we'll talk more about later, a sampling tray, and finally a USB cable for connecting the roaster to a computer. To get the machine ready to roast, set it up right, plug it in, and place the top, you know, on top. When you turn it on, you'll notice there are five function buttons. The far right button is the menu button, which you can touch multiple times to cycle through the menu options. The very first option is fan calibration, which is used to calibrate your link based on your altitude. Now this feature was designed for pro roasters taking the machine from their roastery to origin farms, typically at much higher altitudes but it also helps home roasters dial in their profiles. Now, whether you're in the foothills of North Carolina like me or in the mile high city of Denver, Colorado, we can both roast the same coffee and get the exact same results. It's a pretty simple operation, so I'll quickly show you how to do it here. Hop into the app and select fan calibration. If you don't know your altitude, just Google your city or town plus altitude and you'll get the answer in feet. Use Google again to convert feet to meters, and this is the number you'll plug into the app. It'll tell you exactly what to set your trim to, and now we'll get back to the roaster. Select 
fan calibration, and use the plus and minus buttons to set your desired trim. Hit the play button and you're done. It'll remember the setting each time you turn it on, so you'll only need to adjust this again if you travel with your roaster or factory reset it. Back to the link and it's time to talk about profile packs. Now, if we go to our menu again and hit it a few more times, we'll see profile packs. And this is where we select the intended brewing style. Now, keep in mind, there aren't really any wrong answers here. Any of these profile packs will give you an awesome roast. And this is just a great way to kind of try different roasting styles easily. All of them can be used in cupping, filter brewing, or espresso. They'll just provide you with different expressions in the cup. So when trying a new coffee, I like to pick two or three of them and give me a wide range of what the coffee is capable of. The cupping profiles are great for, you guessed it, cupping. I've also found that they're the shortest roast with the shortest Maillard phase, giving you a classic hot and fast roast, great for maintaining vibrancy and acidity in the cup. Now, depending on the coffee, I sometimes like these profiles in my pour over brews. The filter profiles are geared toward a balanced roast length with a longer Maillard, giving you a cup that's roundly sweet with more gentle acidity. The espresso profiles are the longest roast, meant to increase the solubility of the coffee for a well extracted espresso. They're also great for folks who like a slow and low approach to their filter coffee. These profiles will give you the highest amount of sweetness in the cup, but they do run the risk of being dull in a filter brew. Finally, the Omni profile is meant for when you don't know what else to pick. It'll give you an honest expression of your coffee and a starting point that you can use to further dial in your preferred roasting style. I find it lands between the cupping profiles and filter profiles. Pretty vibrant acidity, um, but with balanced sweetness. In any case, pick a pack, press play, and it's time to choose the exact profile within that pack that you'd like for your coffee. Now, if you just wanna wing it from here, all you've gotta do is hit play and it'll use the default profile. But let's take a look at using the app to guide us to a recommended profile within this pack. If the roasting machine is the heart of this system, then the link app has to be the brain. The app's algorithm guides you to the ideal roast profile for your coffee based on the coffee's density. It's designed to be accurate enough to give professional roasters an honest evaluation of a coffee, even if they only have a 50 gram sample. So all you need to do is enter in some basic information about your coffee, and it'll feed through its growing database of ideal profiles. It'll give you a tasty cup, and more importantly, an accurate representation of the coffee on your very first roast. And I found that about 75% of the time, the recommended profile was awesome for my coffee. But what about that other 25%? The advanced dial-in feature uses feedback from your first roast to provide the final tweak necessary for really dialing your coffee all the way in. And since the minimum batch size on the roaster is 50 grams, that means the most coffee you might waste dialing in a new coffee is only 50 grams. That's what I call efficient roasting. The third and final piece of this system is the Link Studio software. Now, if you've used roast logging software before, like Artisan Scope, this UI will look pretty familiar to you. But one of my favorite things about the Link is you don't even have to be connected to a computer to log your roast. The roaster works exactly as intended without being connected to anything but a power source, and it'll log your roast on board. Once you connect your link to a computer later, you can sync the software and the link, back up your logs to the computer, and view them at any time. This is also where you can design your own profiles, which is what really rockets this machine's potential into the stratosphere. It's the ultimate coffee nerd tool. It gives you complete control over every aspect of the roast from the fan speed profile to the exact shape of the roast curve. You can draw the curve you want, and based on what you want the bean temperature to be at any given time in the roast, and the machine will just take care of it and follow your roast automatically. There are even helpful tool tips that kind of explain what each setting will do with pop-up warnings and if you go outside the recommended parameters from the machine. You can even copy Sam's profiles to use them as templates for you to customize. And since the possibilities here are virtually endless and most of what you can do here is from more experienced roasters, I'm gonna make a separate follow-up video dedicated purely to the Link Studio software. Now, for beginners, I recommend keeping notes on your roast logs so that you can easily find the favorites for each coffee and repeat them on demand. There's a helpful tab right here so that you can make notes. I also think it's a good idea to change your log file names so that you can easily find past logs and then 
send them to the roaster when it's time to repeat that roast again. Now, speaking of which, this is also where you download firmware updates and new profile packs for your roaster. Nucleus just released a whole batch of Sam's new profile packs in version two, and I'm willing to bet he's not done adding new profile packs yet. On top of that, other link roasters can send you their custom profiles and you can add them to your machine from here as well. Or let's say you bought a coffee from us and you wanted to taste it exactly the same way we did. Well, we can now share our sample profiles on every coffee roasted and you can play that profile back on your link and taste exactly what we tasted. You can even load artisan curves from other users who have different roasters and the link will follow that roast curve as well. Again, the possibilities here are endless. All right, before we get to our roasting demo, it wouldn't be a proper review video or buyer's guide if I didn't give you some pros and cons to consider to help you decide if this roaster is right for you. Well, we only sell things that we truly believe in, and I've looked at this system with a very critical eye. I've given you a lot of pros to consider already, so it's only fair to share some cons, but honestly, I've only found two major cons in my testing so far. First and most obvious is the price. Everybody's got a budget and trust me, I get it. The current price for these machines is $1,850. That's nearly $1,500 more than my now second favorite roaster, the Fresh Roast SR800 with the extension tube. But to be fair, it all depends on how far you wanna take your home roasting journey. For many home roasters with practice and experience, that fresh roast setup will roast great coffee and it'll meet their needs for many, many years. But for some of us, as we go down the roasting rabbit hole, you might find yourself wanting more data to refine your skills. So let's add a basic bean temperature setup with a thermometer and a thermocouple, which does close the gap a little bit. What about consistency though? Roasting consistently on the fresh roast requires that you keep a watchful eye over the roast, making adjustments the entire time. And you may need to adapt your settings on the fly if you're roasting outside where ambient conditions can impact your roast. Again, a roaster with a lot of practice on the SR100 can be pretty darn consistent no matter the conditions. But I can tell you from experience, it can get a little tedious with back-to-back -back roasting and downright stressful if you need to nail that roast on the first try. Thanks to the PID system, the link accounts for all that for you, and all you have to do to deliver the same roast over and over again is push play. While it's roasting, you can sit back and read a book or watch some cool coffee roasting videos on YouTube. Not to mention how easy it is to try a wide range of roasting styles on the fly. And when you find your favorite profile and you need another batch of fresh roasted coffee, just play back that profile. If you've got the budget for the link, I think it's well worth the investment in convenience alone. Now let's talk about that second con, which is the one I've actually heard the most often. And that's that the link has a maximum roast capacity of 100 grams. Well, first of all, that's not entirely true. To be clear, Sam's profiles are designed for 50 to 100 grams because that's the batch size at which he feels most confident giving roasters pinpoint accuracy. After all, the system was designed for dialing in roast to within a second or two of his targeted profiles. But that doesn't mean the link can't roast more than 100 grams of coffee. Its sister roaster, the Cafe Logic Nano, advertises a max capacity of 200 grams with their boost add-on. Now, from my testing, of the 100 plus roast I've done so far, a quarter of them have been testing 150 and 200 gram batches, all without the boost kit. And I'm here to tell you the link can absolutely roast 200 gram batches. Now you won't be able to use Sam's built-in profiles, but once you get comfortable with the studio software, you can design your own profiles for 200 gram batches. I'm actually working on a method of converting roughly Sam's profiles from 100 to 200 grams. And I've gotten within 10 to 15 seconds of his targets. So once I get that dialed in a little bit more, I'll share that with you with our next link video on the Link Studio software. Now, the other thing I wanna point out about batch size is that batch size for a home roaster kind of becomes a moot point when easy playback and on-demand roasting is available. Wait, that's right, I haven't mentioned on-demand roasting yet. So since the link is an air roaster and begins the roast cycle from room temperature, your rest times before the couple brew to its full potential are significantly shortened compared to drum roasting. Now, again, this is one of the main selling points for this roaster as a sample roaster. 
And this is a pattern we've actually noticed ourselves with the S-Rite 100 compared to our Arleo Bullet, but we hadn't figured out why this was the case until we learned about the link. Either way, we had to test this ourselves, so we roasted two coffees, a fully washed and a crazy anaerobic natural on the same day with the Link, SR800, and the Ilio Bullet. And we cupped all those coffees nearly every day for two weeks. Now, if you wanna see the full results of that, there's a link in the description to our blog post on this rest test. But the short version is that the cups from the Link and SR800 were delicious and expressive significantly sooner than the cups from the Ilio Bullet. We're talking a few days up to a week sooner. That means you could remember the night before that you were out of roasted coffee for your morning cup, load a batch in the link, press play, and have an amazing coffee ready to brew first thing in the morning. Gone are the days of roasting a bunch of coffee in a big batch and worrying about using it all within its peak window like you would with a drum roaster. Which means you cut down on waste too. Or what if you buy a really expensive coffee? Now if your minimum batch size is a pound, that's a lot of pressure to nail that roast or risk losing that whole pound of expensive coffee. Now, in all fairness, there are still really good reasons to choose a drum roaster, like the Ilio Bullet or one of the Kaleido roasters. A big one that comes to mind is if you're planning on running a small business as a micro roaster, in that case, the Ilio would certainly be a better choice over the link as a production roaster. Or, hey, maybe you're just really drawn to the aesthetic and old school appeal of having a drum roaster, and I, I certainly can't blame you for that. watched everything so far, you've realized there's a lot of different ways I could go about this, depending on what I want out of this roast. I could use the super simple plug and play approach using just the link itself, or I could use the studio software to custom design my own profile from the ground up. Well, since this is a beginner's guide and I keep promising that even the newest home roaster could use this machine to make amazing roasts, let's go with that approach today. I don't worry, I plan on doing a follow-up video showing you how to design custom profiles using the software, but this time, let's focus on a simple method that's guaranteed to give us great results every time. All right, we're ready to roast today. We've got our coffee, which is this amazing natural process from the West Valley in Costa Rica, farmer Danilo Salazar. Love this coffee. And we've got our density tube, and we've got to use the app to help us decide which profile to pick. Gonna to go to profile selector, new sample entry. Let's go with Omni, nice safe choice today. Now, to determine, <clears throat> now the first thing it's gonna ask you is which version of the tube do you have? Version one is the older version. They've recently released a version two. Mine is the older one, which we can tell because it weighs 63.2 grams. And if you open that up, you see that is the range that V1 falls in. Next up, it's time to measure the density using the tube. Now it's time to weigh our sample into our density tube. I like to place the sample tray underneath the tube because we're gonna have to overfill it to make sure all the nooks and crannies and gaps are filled. Put that in the dosing cup for now. Place our sample tray down. Density tube, zero our scale and overfill it. Again, you just wanna make sure it's nice and full and then level it off. Back of the density tube lid works great for that. Now we can weigh, we've got 69.4 grams and that's what we're gonna enter into our app now. And we're gonna enter in 69.4 grams. Our process is of course natural, as I said earlier. And I'm in the US, so I'm using 110 volts. This final box you don't have to fill in, uh, it's just optional, but I happen to know this coffee is a blend of Katura and Katui beans. And looks like we'll be using 200.5 for our profile in the Omni Pack. Now that we've got our profile, it's time to enter it into the roaster. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. And we'll use the menu button to go to profile packs, hit play to select. We'll use the plus and minus buttons 
to navigate to Omni, hit play to load Omni. Now at this point we can just wing it if we like and just use these two buttons to increase the development percentage, but we're gonna enter in this exact profile that was recommended. To do that, we're gonna to go to the profile menu, use the plus and minus buttons again to get to 200.5, hit play to load that one in, and it's defaulted to 12.2% development. Now, of course, we can continue to refine this to our tastes. I can go down as far as into the tens or on up darker if I'd like, but let's go ahead and go with a default 12.2 and hit play again, and we're ready to roast. So we're ready to roll here, and just a quick note, I do have my laptop plugged in. That is optional for the method we're using today, but I thought I'd plug it in, record what we got going on here, and show it to you. So otherwise, you don't need to worry about it unless you're using the studio software. Very last thing to take care of is our batch size. We are keeping things simple, going with Sam's default 100 grams. So that's what we're using today. We got to load up. We're ready to roll. Just hit play twice. All right, this is David from the future popping in to have a little chat with you about this roast. Now, typically, this is the point in the roast where I would talk you through the decisions I'm making during the roast, how I'm adjusting for things. But with the link, we made all those decisions up front, so there's not a lot to do. Now, I am going to fast forward through this entire roast. Um, there's not a ton to see, uh, so I'm going to speed things up, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that little fast forward icon because it'll just drive us nuts if it's blinking the whole time. Unfortunately, I was unable to find a camera angle where I could see inside the roast chamber as well as the front display while this roast was happening. So I'm going to pop up a little bit of B-roll footage so you can see what it looks like inside the roast chamber during a typical roast. So we're coming up on the first end of the first phase of the roast, which is uh, the drying phase. And that is marked by the yellow point or color change is what Link Studio denotes it as. Now you can't mark color change on the Link machine itself. There is a way to mark first crack, but not color change. Uh, but if you're using Studio, you can sit there in the top right box of the Studio. You can click that and it will mark it for your records. Again, you can always come back after the roast when you resync your roaster to your computer to mark color change. I tend to mark it in the 320 to 330 range, so I have something kind of consistently to go with. It does allow you to record first crack on the roaster. There is a way to do that so that you don't have to worry about remembering when that was when you go back to sync. Speaking of first crack, I did want to mention that you don't need to mark first crack in order for the program to run entirely by itself. Now, once again, this is meant to be completely automated if that's what you'd like to do. But I do recommend marking first crack, especially when you are using a new coffee, getting used to it, finding your ideal roast profile for it. That first crack marker gives us a lot of data, a lot of feedback, and you can enter that time into the advanced dial-in and use that for it to give you a better recommended roast profile. Uh, but again, you can completely leave out marking first crack if you're just sitting and you know what you wanna do and you know your profile already. So again, you can mark first crack with buttons on the front of the roaster, but I'm gonna use it in studio. You'll see me do that here shortly. And I do wanna mention, I had a difficult time getting my microphone to pick up all the cracks with this roast. I tried to adjust it as best I could, but you're only gonna hear the very loudest ones. Uh, I tend to mark first crack after a handful of pops in quick succession. And at that point, I feel really confident that we've entered first crack, uh, but not necessarily rolling crack. That might come later, but it's just when you get a few pops in quick succession. Now we're going to see here the dev timer counting down. Uh, that is the percentage that's appeared on the bottom since I marked first crack. And as soon as it hits 12.2, it's going to go straight into cooling mode about a minute into development. That's going to give us a nice light to light medium roast. Uh, you can definitely 15% is going to be closer to a medium. Uh, even up to 18% could be well within a medium. You'll notice that the machine cools to under 150 degrees very quickly within about a minute, uh, but it will continue to cool for several minutes longer. That's because it's trying to come all the way back down as close to room temperature as possible. That's part of the machine's design is that it begins roasting as close to room temperature as possible. That helps with the 
fast resting time that helps with consistency between batches. And my cooling cycle is going to be complete in about a minute at this point. I can empty my chaff collector, pour out my beans, load another batch, hit play again, and be roasting with nothing else to do. It will repeat that exact profile right over again. I don't have to do anything else if that's what I want to do. So it makes roasting multiple batches really simple and straightforward. All done. So let's take a look at that chaff collector. I want to show you what it looks like. It just screws off the top of the lid. Nice and low mess. It was a natural, pretty chaffy coffee. Oh, there's a little bit that fell out. Let's take a look at those beans. Oh yeah. That's a lovely light medium city plus. Now let's see a little before and after. And there you have it folks, our Nucleus Link review, beginner's guide and buyer's guide all in one. If you found this video useful, please show that like button a little love. And if you've watched this video and decided the link is the roaster for you, consider supporting us by purchasing it from our store at thecaptainscoffee.com. We'll have some free goodies thrown in there like a free coffee sampler, free shipping, stuff like that. And like I mentioned, we've got more videos planned on advanced topics with the link, like an in-depth guide on how to use the studio software. So be sure to subscribe, comment below with any more questions that you'd like to ask in that video about the link. There's some other great videos out there uh, from Roast Rebels and Nucleus themselves. So I'll leave links in the description below for you to check those out as well. So until next time, Thanks as always for joining us and happy roasting.